Hey, what's up guys? It's Kale Brock here. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker. And in this video, I want to run you guys through seven actionable, tangible, intermediate surfing tips that you can go out and apply straight away in the surf. This video is a reflection of my brand new online course, the Intermediate Surfers Roadmap, which is designed to take intermediate surfers all the way up to advanced. And it's available at thesurfersroadmap.com. We're gladly celebrating over 5,000 students who have joined us over the past 12 months. We'd love to have you guys too. All right, let's jump in. So the first tip we're gonna talk about is flow and speed first. This is something that's really important to me because Generating flow and cultivating a good sense of flow in surfing provides a really good um, foundation upon which to progress your surfing. Flow to me means there is a good balance and good efficiency of movement on a wave. Good flow is all to do with putting your surfboard in the right part of the wave to get effortless speed because with speed, you're really able to do whatever turn you want. In the Surfers Roadmap, for example, we talk about the difference between sort of advanced speed flow and then sort of basic speed flow. Um, both are relevant, but it's really important to be able to adapt accordingly um, to the waves because it enables you to sort of do whatever turns you want. So the task here is to spend an entire session surfing at 80% with the focus of surfing with the wave and never forcing anything. A lot of people actually hinder their own speed and flow by trying too hard. The amount of surfers who I've had to actually recommend, hey, let's pull your surfing back to 80%, and then we show them on camera um, how different that actually looks, and their surfing improves out of sight, because it means instead of going full bore 100%, they can actually slow things down and start to think more consciously about the maneuvers they're trying or the techniques they're trying to employ, whether it be getting low at the bottom of the wave, getting high at the top, or like we said before, moving into the power zone and making that nice and effortless. Now, things don't always work out as you just saw there, uh, but I think that's a really good place to start. Okay, the next tip that I want to give you guys is to do with recompression. It jumps on the back of what we just talked about with flow. At the end of maneuvers, it's really important for surfers to recompress on the way back down the wave. And it's such a crucial component of improving your surfing because that recompression enables you to go along the wave and continue doing maneuvers. Many intermediate surfers come to me with the sort of feedback, the self-feedback that they do a turn, and then they really struggle to um, capture speed again. And it's these tiny little recompression moments that I have to really slow the footage down so that you can see that enable a surfer to actually continue after a maneuver in order to um, recapture speed and continue surfing down the wave. If you look at it from this point of view, after this top turn here, that tiny little moment there, that recompression moment, enables me to then continue surfing along that wave. And that's the difference between, for me, intermediate surfing and more advanced surfing, is how well you can link turns together like that and find your flow. So the task here is to, ideally on the surf skate, practice recompressing after top turns, top turns is the main one, by adding in an extra cone. So for instance, on this backside top turn here, it's almost like a roundhouse cutback. I'm doing the top turn and I'm adding in that extra cone at the end to be able to recompress around. If you're not familiar with surf skating, we've got a new how to surf like a pro, how to surf skate like a pro series coming. Uh, and there's also a couple of tutorials I'll chuck up here. Okay, the next tip that I want to talk about is getting used to loading into the lower body. And in brackets here, fix your bottom turn. The bottom turn is one of the most important elements of surfing because it gets you up to the top. It gets you up to your maneuvers with speed. It's important to look at the differences between a bottom turn and the bottom half of a speed flow. As you can see here, with the speed flow, we're kind of moving in this horizontal trajectory. Uh, across the wave and down the line. Whereas a bottom turn, we're moving more vertically up the wave. 
to try and get to that nice sort of high zone uh, so that we can actually perform a maneuver. So learning how to actually get loaded and strong in that lower body position so that you can then extend is a really important part of the surfing process. Many people I find end up hinging at the hips instead of loading into the knees and the muscles around the knees, you know, the quads and the hamstrings and the bum. If we're hinging at the hips, we find that it really doesn't allow for that kinetic explosion to occur after that loading takes place. So the task here is actually in the gym. If you feel uncomfortable loading into the lower body, spend some time working in the gym this week with just basic sort of risk-free movements and just doing some really basic um, low movements. So this is where your, your bum is low to the ground uh, whether it's this more mobility sort of flow stuff uh, to in, in improve mobility or whether it's more strength focus like here on the BOSU ball or you can do some kettlebell lunges. Lunges are a really good movement for surfing um, is up to you. But basically what we want to do is achieve a stronger base from which to work from uh, with your body which will translate really well into your surfing. Okay, the next tip is to fully rotate during your top turns. And in brackets here in parentheses, know the difference between re-entries and top turns or cutbacks. Okay, so with the top turn, a really common mistake that I see is a surfer goes up and instead of actually committing to the turn and looking back behind them, they look backwards and they cut the turn short. Whereas if we introduce a, a, a more full top turn here, we find that, see that eye movement there? See the head difference there between them? And see the amount of spray that results. So it's a really big difference between that, um, those two turns. This is where we sort of introduce the concept of the dial. We want to fully rotate with our shoulders and our head all the way through this dial to allow the board to follow because where we look and point is where we go. Now in saying that, you can't just sort of rip that leading arm around behind you and expect the board to follow in an engaged sort of powerful way. This surfer here, who's a, who's a really good surfer of mine, um, is a really athletic guy and, and takes advice really takes advice on really quickly. So with that sort of opening of the body, notice how at different stages of the turn here, his arm is, is quite significantly further along the dial. So he's actually rotated without finding that connection to the lower body. So you actually have to rotate through the dial without cutting off any significant parts of it you have to rotate from, let's just say, 12 to 6, passing through 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If you don't pass through 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and you just jump from 12 straight to 6, you're going to lose that connection with the lower body. And that's something we want to work on. So the task is to practice those top turns on the surf skates because we can get high levels of repetition with an emphasis on perfecting your rotation. The general guideline there is, of course, look and point where you want to go. The surf skates are such such an excellent training tool um, for surfing because they do allow us to really uh, control variables that are not controllable in the ocean. So these are a perfect way to work on your top turns. The next tip is to experiment with different surf crafts, surfboards. I've been really lucky lately to have received a bunch of um, mid-length boards and, and different fishes and stuff like that. This particular one is a Townsend uh, 7.0 from Album, and it's such a beautiful board. And I've found that besides just um, adding in a new sort of colourful element to my surfs and ma making things a little bit interesting, it's also really forcing me to sometimes come back and actually just refocus on the fundamentals where I go, hey, this, this seven foot board's a lot harder to turn than my than my five nine performance board. So immediately I have, I have to get lower, I have to get stronger, and I have to really um, emphasize those fundamental techniques which get us going on a wave. So the task here is to is pretty simply to, to grab a foamy, an old big fish, or if you if you can get grab a mid length and take it out in generally recommended um, inconsequential surf with a playful mindset. It's a bit of a mouthful, that one, and it's self-explanatory. What I want to do is get you 
engaged with your surfing and, and really finding that playful element to your surfing, um, which is, is great for your mental health and, and great for your surfing game, but it also is really good to get you actually focused on the fundamentals. A lot of the times, after jumping off these boards and going back to your performance board, you'll find that things actually are moving a lot better and you'll find your performance goes up. Cool, and another one that's, um, I guess, less tangible, less um, technique focused is enjoy outcome focused surfs. This is really cool with the wave pool. This is why I love going to the wave pool and teaching at the wave pool, because you can really find that repetition on a wave, um, which is pretty rare in the ocean, unless you're finding like really perfect surf. And it means you have the opportunity to work on things you've been wanting to work on. So for instance, here, I was got to work on my backhand. You know, there's some things here that I, I really wanted to, to work on with my backhand, and I was able to do that for, you know, a good few hours in the pool. And you know, my clients get to do the same when they come to my wave pool retreats. Because uh, again, they're getting, you know, 70 to 80 waves in a day that are all the same. And, and it really, really helps, uh, especially with the video feedback. So the task is pretty simple here. I want you to assess your surfing weaknesses, and you might have to do that kind of aesthetically, um, or if you're lucky enough, if you can get some video, that would be perfect. Come up with a technique plan, so go through my tutorials if that helps, um, jump into the surfers roadmap programs, so they're really good for that, and apply consciously we're always doing it subconsciously, but now I want, to, want you to apply it consciously for at least one session per week. Apply that technique plan one session per week. A lot of the surfs, uh, the reason I say once per week is because surfing can get stale if you get obsessed with technique and progression. I know for me, if I'm on a filming trip and I'm thinking about performance too much, I'm thinking about ticking boxes too much. It takes away that edge, that joy of surfing that I um, is the, the sole reason I get up in the morning. It's the reason I do it. So it's really important for, for me to actually take breaks from being so focused on um, outcomes in surfing and just enjoying the surf for what it is. Our previous tip, um, riding different crafts, is also very good for that, to take you out of your head and just ride the wave. Um, it helps you get in touch with your surfing. So whether it is going to the wave pool once a week as opposed to just surfing in the ocean, or if you don't have access to a wave pool, um, it's you know maybe assessing conditions and saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm weak in my small wave game and Wednesday looks like it's going to be an appropriate day for that, so I'm going to go and work on it for that session. Whatever it is, just employing some of that is a good way to just keep you um, interested and engaged with your progression journey. The last tip is a big one because it has a big impact generally with your surfing and it's don't chase the crowd. There's so many surfers now uh, around the world and you know, I've, this year particularly, I've found so many people um, complaining about surfing and complaining about how many people there are in the surf and there are always times where you have to surf in a crowded spot because there's no other options. But it adds in a high level of frustration to your surfing that you really don't need. And it also um, restricts the amount of wave time that you can get, which really slows down your progression. So my task for you is to secure your own backup or go to waves where you know you can go and always find an uncrowded wave even if it means sacrificing some perfection, some crowded perfection for average emptiness, I always find that it's a worthwhile endeavor. There will always be times where you will pick the crowded surf because it just looks too good or, or whatever, but having these little backup spots that you can go to that you know not many people um, go and surf is a really worthwhile investment in, in sort of securing so that you can stay sane with surfing. Uh, the amount of people now who are really salty and sort of complaining about crowds is is pretty brutal, and I understand it. And again, crowds are a big factor in, in limiting your progression. It's one of the reasons why I struggle doing ocean-based retreats now, because it, I can't control the crowd. So um, find those spots, ha know the conditions that uh, you're going to be able to get waves at those spots, and keep them in your back pocket for when it gets crowded. 
Okay, so those are my seven tips for today. If you enjoyed those, they're a little bit different to normal, make sure you check out thesurfersroadmap.com where you can find access to all my new online courses. You can also just subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already, and you can join me on Instagram at Carol's Broccoli. I'd love to hear from you in the comments uh, what else has made a big impact on your surfing. Is there a tip that you can share with everybody that's uh, really helped you in your progression journey? Maybe it's from one of my videos. Maybe it's just something that you discovered. Maybe it's something that someone told you in the surf. I've had that happen before too. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. That sort of wraps up our um, intermediate content for, for this year. I look forward to chatting with you again soon.